What's going on everyone and welcome back to my channel and the movie I want to take a look at right now is House of Gucci. Now this one comes to us from MGM and this is a part of my little mini series I got going on with catching up on all the films that I may have missed from last year. that are now nominated for Oscars and I just wanted to like make sure like I watch all the nominees as much as possible so I can really determine if they are warranted with their nominations and who's going to win and just be a little bit more accurate with my decision making when I'm picking out all the winners because some of them sometimes I just miss films. And uh, I just wanted to make it my duty this year to catch up on as many as possible. Now, when I was making my podcast episode list for February, I put uh, King Richard and House of Gucci in the same um, camp. Because I was like, alright, that will be uh, another Oscar type episode because House of Gucci is probably going to be nominated for all this stuff. It is not. It's only nominated for makeup and hairstyling. So, But I wanted to continue with my plan because it is technically nominated. And it was talked about and like now I'm going to review it and like just kind of talk it out and see if like maybe some of the snubs were warranted or if they were not. Like all that stuff. But I really wanted to check it out because obviously it was a, a, a film that a lot of people talked about on the Twitter timeline and I just wanted to catch up with it. So it's from uh, director Ridley Scott who did two films last year. I did see The Last Duel though. Uh, this one tells the story of Patricia or Reggiani, an outsider from humble beginnings that marries into the Gucci family. Her unbridled ambition begins to unravel their legacy and triggers a reckless spiral of be betrayal, decadence, revenge, and ultimately murder. So you can tell from the way I'm dressed, I'm not a fashion dude. I don't know much about any high high fashion, Gucci, Versace, Dolce & Gabbana. I don't know any of that stuff. I don't know anything about their backstories. Don't even know what the clothes look like half the time. So I am not the person that like knows anything about this. So like... I'm watching this all unfold for the very first time. I remember seeing a trailer for it and I was like, I, it's fine, I guess. Um, but with Ridley Scott doing two films in one year, that's super ambitious. I have nothing but respect for the guy uh, for doing that because that's really hard to pull off. Um, so for this one, are the, the uh, Oscar snubs warranted for this film? Actually, yes. I don't think this film really deserves much in the Oscars. Makeup and hairstyling, sure, I can agree with that. Um, especially with anything from the hairstyling of like Lady Gaga and Adam Driver to the makeup and just wild hairstyle of Jared Leto. I can see that being nominated in that category. Was Lady Gaga snubbed uh, for this film? I don't think so. Um... I think it's fine. It's a fine performance. I prefer, I prefer her more in like a star is born and Jared Leto's borderline caricature. Um, Adam driver's also just fine. Al Pacino fine. Jeremy Irons isn't even in it that much. Salma Hayek once again, like I get her role in the story and like how it kind of played out towards the end, but like, honestly, okay. It was just kind of a mediocre film. I'm going to be honest with you. So I don't think it got snubbed of anything. And I think uh, Ridley Scott made a better film last year with The Last Duel. I think that should have been nominated for way more than this. Um, so, yeah, I, I I didn't know what I was going to expect while watching this. But for people saying, you know, the runtime really brings it down to the over-the-top performances, to just how boring it is, to it not being as engaging, I was really dreading watching it. But I wanted to see it and see what all the hype was about. And I kind of agree with the majority of people. It's just kind of okay. Um, it's a very competent film. Uh, I don't think there's really necessarily anything wrong with it. It's just kind of like it tells the story in two hours and 40 minutes, but also feels like it's shortchanged a little bit. Um, I would much rather see this as a series. Now, I could be an idiot right now and not really realize that there is a series based on this out there, but I would have much rather seen everything a little bit more fleshed out and have us a little bit more emotionally connected to everything going on, whether it be the betrayal or the romance or the the murder or the the espionage or the you know people backstabbing, like all that stuff, it like it was played out correctly, but I just don't think it has had much of an impact as Ridley Scott or the writers wanted it to happen. It just it was just kind of like that's nice, and I never felt like I was invested in anything that I was watching because also I think what really hinders it is the performances. I think everyone's kind of mid. 
throughout the entire film. Lady Gaga's got a couple scenes that I was like, okay, she's finally getting into the rhythm of it, but we only got 30 minutes left. And yes, everyone's making fun of Jared Leto um, and his <laughs> Italian-American stereotype accent. It's goofy for sure. I, you know, <laughs> God bless him, I guess, right? So <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say. It's like, it's the type of thing that it didn't really, it's not really what bothers me um, because he and Al Pacino are uh, father and son in the movie. They don't have that much of a role in it. They technically do in the story, but like it's just so weird because they they only have like minimal scenes throughout the film. So he wasn't in it that much for it to bother me. This was mainly about Lady Gaga and Adam Driver storyline. Um, but yeah, I, I thought his performance was yeah, it, it was goofy for sure, but it didn't really bother me. But yeah, I just think there is a, there is a coldness about it. There is something that really kind of pushed me away, and I didn't I wasn't really sucked in at any moment uh, to where I really wanted to care about what was going on. What I was watching, like I said, was fine. It's just I never felt like I was in it 100%. And that could be because everyone was trying to do a terrible accent or there wasn't that many like powerful acting moments to really get us uh, into a sense of these characters. I don't know what it was, but it felt really cold, very just kind of mid in my eyes. Um, and I, I know really Scott created a fine movie, but like it's like, you know, it's not really my cup of tea. I don't really want to watch this again. Um, I will say production design wise and costume, makeup and hairstyling, that's all fantastic. Because they are they are jumping to three decades, uh, 70s, 80s, and 90s. I thought everything was handled really well in terms of dressing up the era and making us feel lavish and rich and just decadent because that's what this, uh, this family is all about. They're all about the rich lifestyle and just making it feel over the top and lavish. And I really enjoyed that. And then when you cut to like, Jared Leto and Al Pacino scenes it's a little bit more stripped down they're in like kind of a farmhouse and they're still they're still very rich but like not as flashy as like um the main Gucci's because uh, they are uh, uncle and um uh, nephew Gucci so yeah I really like the way this film um uh looks and is dressed and how everyone just fits into their costumes and and the the hair and everything and they they really get a sense of the the visual look of what this story can be. I think it was just mainly more the meat of the story, the characters and the emotional connection to all of them and just making us even care ever so slightly. So I think, like I said, really Scott kind of did a 50-50 job where it's like, I think he dressed the movie appropriately. It looks really lavish. It's it's really um, vibrant and just decadent on screen, but it felt empty. It felt cold. It didn't feel like it had the type of development or fleshing out of the situations or characters to make us even care about the eventual murder at the end, where it's just kind of like, okay, cool. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. Um, so really Scott, I, I appreciate the effort. Um, I just, like I said, I, I think out of the two, the last duel was my favorite from last year. Absolutely. And like I said, performance wise, everyone just kind of, it's fine. Um, the accents are pushing it into cartoonery, uh, territory. I don't. That's not even a word. Uh, but um, but yeah, I think Lady Gaga is the only one I think actually like really sells her character in a couple scenes where I was like, this is it. This shows the character's ambition and drive to get what she wants, to get what she deserves because she was the 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 go getter out. Of, excuse me, out of the two. You saw that drive and that fire in her eyes. And if you crossed her path, she was going to obliterate you. I felt the intensity slightly in a couple of scenes because of the way she delivered her lines and just the way she emoted her face and just the the soul leaving her body when the, she had to make like some really just terrible and sometimes rough decisions. There were moments, fleeting moments of good acting there. And I know she can do it because... Star is Born is very good. It's a, it's a good case study to show people that she can actually do it. But there were moments where you can you can see the evolution of her character and the evolution of her decisions and her thought process. And like, that was cool. Everyone else, just fine. Um, I think the second most compelling character, maybe Jeremy Irons, because he's always really good in what he does in terms of the way he delivers lines, but he's barely even in it. So... I don't know. Um, 
And uh, yeah, Adam Driver does what he can, and Al Pacino, and just everyone else is just like, it's fine. Um, I honestly don't know what else to say. This is just kind of one of those films where I watched it because it was one of the films from last year. I want to see if like all of the uh, non-Oscar nominations were warranted. I think they are. It was just uh, it was an experience <laughs> knowing that um, you know House of Gucci and uh, uh, Last Duel came out in the same breath of last year. Just fascinating how different they are. So I don't know what else to say. Um, it, it is what it is. So let me know. Did you love the House of Gucci? Uh, did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was okay or whatever? Please let me know down below. I would like to know your thoughts. But that will do it for this, for this review, guys. I'm Chase Lee. And tune in next time for whatever I review next. I will see you guys later.